Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I have an afterlife guest that recently transitioned. This is someone who is an actor with just a whole ton of potential, Cameron Boyce. Now, you know, if you've watched Above Life Channel previously, you know that I am an incredible incredibly huge Disney fan, of course. And this morning when I woke up, you guys, I was so in the mood to channel and it's a weekend. So and it's a beautiful day. And I thought, okay, so I'm going to make breakfast, do all my morning stuff. And then I'm going to get out and channel while I can, while the weather's nice on the deck. And then I saw on my YouTube stream that Cameron Boyce died. Now he was 20 years old. And in fact, I said out loud, I said, oh no, he's a Disney Channel star. He's known from his work on the TV show, Jesse, and also from his role in the movie, the Disney movie, Descendants. And so for a moment, I just thought, wow, that's so sad. And I said it out loud and my husband was in the kitchen and and I thought, gosh, this is just, oh, this is so sad. I said, well, let me find out, you know, what the deal is, what happened. And so I took my phone and I went into the bathroom to do my teeth stuff that I do and washing my face and stuff. And I started to listen to the announcement that he died and right at the moment I clicked on to open up the announcement about his death to hear it. I saw in my head a flash in my head of a seizure. And I thought, oh, he had a seizure. And it felt like an accident. It felt like I thought, well, you know, it's 4th of July weekend. Maybe it was like some kind of a boating accident or something like that. And it felt like family. It felt like, um, not negative. It didn't feel like an overdose or anything like that. And then the next words that came out of the, the newscaster's mouth were, he died in his sleep of a seizure. That was a result of an ongoing medical condition that he had had for his, for his life. And so that he'd been being treated for. And I thought, okay, enough. Stop listening. Done. Okay, so I felt really connected. And then I sat there for a moment and I, all of a sudden I could see his face. And I thought, oh my gosh, kid, I know exactly who you are. Like, I, I know exactly which actor you are. Didn't really recognize the name at first. Although I've seen the, t the movie Descendants and I've, I saw the TV show Jesse forever because my kids liked it. And I liked it too. It was fun to watch. And... So I knew all the characters in there and all of a sudden I knew exactly who he was. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel connected to you. And I could see, I could just see him and he's like, hey, make sure that people know I'm all right. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So put my makeup on, I get my, and this is a brand new Mickey t-shirt. I just got it. It's like a summery one. And I'm like, I'm gonna, perfect, I'm gonna put on my Mickey t-shirt and my Mickey earrings and my bracelet and get all ready and I'm gonna channel you. Now, Cameron just recently died and if you watch me at Above Life Channel, you know that I've had like sort of rules of engagement about connection with afterlife spirits. Giving them time and being very respectful to their families when they died, you know, right after they died, but and you'll see in another uh, recent video that I've done, again, this is July, 2019, I'm recording this, where I'm shifting or opening my mind about the timing of when to channel people who died. After a recent experience I had with a client whose mom just had died like six days before I did a session with her. And which the session intention was not for that. We had the session scheduled for like a month. And then I felt like, and it was so beneficial and so helpful and so healing. I felt like, you know, I need to be open about the timing of when I channel. And with Cameron, it really feels like he's like right here, like 
right at me and I'm like, okay, I will channel you now and I want to channel you now and I want to connect, I want to connect with you and share your awesome energy. And I don't know when I'll actually share and post the video though, but I'm channeling this like the weekend of his death. We just found out it's Sunday morning, the 7th of July right now. And so thank you, Cameron. Wow. It is really nice to meet you. It is really nice to meet you. He has such a vibrant energy, a young, youthful energy. I mean, I know that you're only 20, but you seem super diverse in your skill set. I mean, you're funny, you're a comedic actor, but you also feel like you have this serious side. So I'm connecting with you, seeing you, but I'm also feeling you. You're very sensitive heartfelt energy you have a very strong bond with you have a depth of caring in the relationships that you have with your friends and with your family where it's a strong bond like you're very it feels like you're very loyal and the energy that i'm connecting with you from is showing me that your relationships matter a lot to you and that's probably why we're talking right now he says Ab he says absolutely absolutely he says you bet you bet So he's showing me New York, the state of New York. He's also showing, and then he mentions Manhattan. And I don't know if, I mean, I think that was actually the, isn't that the scene like where like Jesse was supposedly filmed? It was like there in New York in Manhattan. He says, yes, yes, it was, yes. And he says, but I want, to, I want you to see Broadway. He says, I want you to see Broadway. I want you to understand that I really enjoyed being a stage actor and had I had a full life, had I lived a full life, I would have loved to have been on Broadway. And he says, you know, I can sing. And I, he says, I have some moves, you know, like I can dance, I can sing and dance. And he says, I would have loved to have performed on Broadway long-term. It looks like he may have done stints or had parts and plays earlier on and inter intermittently or tried out for things or that kind of thing. But it looks like he was under contract with Disney. And so there's some limits to that and what he could participate in as far as scheduling goes. He says, um, as a company, he says, Disney, he said, now I was on the side, he says, now you have to know that I was on the side of the, the you know, the television, the production, the that part of things he said so I can't I can't talk about the theme parks he said but we did have um, we used to have events and things he says where we would go to the theme parks and you know go to Disneyland and and um, do like meet and greets and things and um, you know promoting movies and like with descendants and stuff and he says that, and that was really fun he says it's really fun to have the experience where you get to meet people that appreciate your work that see what you create and and he says and to be part of a of a big a big performance and production and that's basically what the Disney productions offers to you is like it's a huge production you know so with Descendants it was very much a like a musical theater and an, and an opportunity to create something that was then accessible to kids to everyone to all different kinds of audiences you know he says families watched it he says, you know, as you're an example, he says, like, you're an example. Families watched it, you know, and he's like, it's not just for the girls. It's not just for the boys. It's not just for the kids. It's, it's for the parents and the grandparents. And the, he says, you know, it's all ages can appreciate what goes into the production. And because it wasn't a Broadway show, but it was created in that, uh, in that kind of a setting, it allows a lot more people to have access to really good quality performance. So to be part of that, and he says, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful to be part of that. I'm thankful to be part of that. And he says, I, I wanna thank my mom and my sister a lot for their encouragement, love and support. And he says, I have a little brother too. And my dad is um, pretty cool about, you know, my work and, and, and at first it was kind of like, like I was involved in sports and things too when I was younger. I was always active. I was always a really active kid. Like I, I had a lot of energy. I always had a ton. I was like the annoying kid, you know, on the team that like hogged the ball and then screwed around with it and didn't actually like, you know, make the goal or go to the net or what, what you know, the whole point of like being on a team and being competitive and stuff, he says. I just wanted to kind of goof around with it and have fun with it and I think, I think though, 
I don't want me, I don't want people to think that I'm just you know a, a screw off kind of a thing or or just uh not serious about my work either or about life because I do think that part of the point is to have fun to really enjoy what you're doing and yet at the same time recognize that when it's time to bring it like you bring it you know bring your a game and I I definitely did that I appreciated and respected the craft of acting and really paid attention to choreography and to expressing myself musically and the and voice lessons and things like that I mean I I trained, you know, you train like an athlete, like Olympic athletes train for the potential of being in the Olympics, you know, like athletes train and they compete for that. The same goes for actors, people who are entertainers, performers, whether you're, you know, in a dance production, a theater production, a television production, or, or a movie, you, these people train. I mean, it's a rigorous, it's disciplined. You have to have that, but, but it's not all serious all the time. So can you talk a little bit about, you are very chatty and I totally respect that. Like high five on that. <laughs> very chatty. He says, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very, thank you. So be truthful. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Yes, I am actually. Yes. Did someone tell you that I was? No, I'm feeling it. Like I'm seeing you like with the Harry Potter tie on and I feel like you're a Harry Potter fan. Yes, yes. But he's like, don't tell Disney. Don't tell Disney. <laughs> yes, I'm, Universal Studios is awesome. He said, it's a ton of fun to go there. He says, it's, oh, it's awesome. And then he's saying to me, okay, so I want to ask, okay, so, okay, so I had lost train of my question. I was going to ask you something. Um, Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of different things too. I'm actually, my head's kind of hurting right here. Like the side of my head right here a little bit. All of a sudden I'm getting a little, like a uh, little tings right here. Almost like sinus stuff, but it's different. Um, I see an image of a boat. Oh, it might be third eye stuff. I see an image of a boat. And like I said, when I heard that you died and right away I, I saw this image of you having a seizure. And then I thought, oh, it must be like an accident because it, felt like you know there's family around there's friends around or there's there's an energy of love and I'm um like like leisure kind of leisure I guess not love and it's the right word but leisure like it's casual and you know things are good and life is good and I'm having fun and that kind of thing so I thought it was an accident and I could see a boat and so because of that I'm like curious about the boat thing he's like I loved my family and I we liked to go He's showing me going out on the boats and I think it's family. It might be friends, but it looks like boating, going boating. So I don't know if prior to his death, you guys, he went boating or if he likes to boat or his family does that or that's like a thing. I don't know what the deal is, but there's like a boat and he's showing me the boat and he's showing me leisure and like it's pleasurable and he's having a good time and things are, are nice. You know, it's nice. It's good kind of a thing. Um, he's also showing me a girl, but I think it might be a sister. Is your sister an actress too? In performing arts, yes. He says performing arts. And your family is supportive of your career. I can see that. Is there, oh, let me ask you this. So are there any actors or actresses that you looked up to in particular, like that you would um, maybe be in awe of or want to, to, you know, that you really respect like work ethic wise or or being off. He's showing me, oh, interesting. Um, I can see his face, but I can't hear his name. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio is one. I'm almost feeling like he's been compared to him or something. So Leonardo DiCaprio, there's some kind of a connection there. Leonardo DiCaprio. And he's showing me, so I'm seeing little snippets of stuff. Like I see like an open mic, open mic night, open mic. Like, I don't know if he was a actual comedian, like stand up comedy, but I feel like you could do that. Like that could be something you could have actually done. Like it could have been a career for you or an option for you. But I feel like you like a lot of different things in variety and would like to do a lot of different kinds of things. Yeah, he says, um, so Disney, so you had a, like a, 
you've worked with Disney and it looks like you were under contract with Disney and I, but I see you in theater production. Like that's a place where either you really want to be, your heart is like on Broadway and that kind of a thing um, and traveling and touring. Um, he says, yes, I was, I have been, I have been in productions. And um, so did you, would you desire if you would have had more time here on earth to be a, um, I, oh, I asked you who you respected or who you looked up to and Leonardo DiCaprio was one. Um, and then there is, so if you, like, I'm going to ask you to speculate. <laughs> if you, oh, sorry, a little bug there. If you would have had the opportunity to live a longer, fuller life here, what would you see your career becoming or, or being, or what would you want to do? Would you want to work in movies? Would you want to be on the stage? What, how would you, how would you, what would you have wanted? What were, okay, let me ask it. Let me reframe this because I don't want you to try to predict a future that isn't here anymore, any longer. Um, what were your wishes? You know, just a couple of months ago when you were thinking about your future, what were your wishes or hopes for your future? He says, you know, I like to take things day by day. I think it's really important to be in the now and live in the moment. And he's showing me taking classes. Like, I don't know if he like wants to be a regular college kid or a student, but it looks like he's taking classes. Um, or wanting to take classes, like wanting to go to college. And he says, I want to study film. I wanted to study film and eventually end up in, and it looks like really big productions. Like it looks like big Broadway musicals or, you know, like where he works, he can work and be the actor and all that and kind of see in the creative moments, like almost like a Tom Hanks or a Robin Williams kind of vibe where he can, take something and make it into something like really get the depth out of something and he could play all different kinds of genres i mean i could really see so much potential so much potential in you but like studying film like i see like you're talking about film or movies so was there a desire to be in drama or more serious roles he says there's a there's always a a desire i think to want to be better you know to want to challenge yourself and to step into new areas and to stretch yourself and to see what you're capable of that's one of the parts of who i am i think that people will remember always remember is that i was up for the challenge you know let's try something new let's do this and eventually i think i could have seen myself in serious roles in movies but I think that the genre that I would start in would definitely be comedy and or acting in a performance where I can engage and use all all the skills that I, you know, all the things that I I know. Um, and there's something really exciting and really energizing about a public like a performance when you're on a stage and there's an, a live audience, there's something about that live audience that really just gets you going. And, and maybe that's just part of what I'm used to and I've grown up with that. And so that's normal to me. So I think that if I had to share some of my visions for myself for the future, I wanna study, study film and have opportunities to do more in film and to have more roles and to be part of of different kinds of of uh, work in in movie movie industry so that would be something that i i would have uh, pursued eventually um, in my life had i had the opportunity so but i don't feel sorry like i don't i don't want people to be sorry or feel really sad that um, my life ended as quickly as it did because I feel like it was really full. Like I feel like I had a lot of opportunities and I feel like it, I had a good life and I feel like I was lucky. And, but I, I also wanna say that I feel like you create your own luck. I believe you create your own luck. So that comes through, you know, the ability to be focused on what you want and hard work and discipline but also having fun, you know, there's value to not taking things so serious. And I think that that gets missed. And there's, I think a perception that, especially with child actors, that you lose your childhood. And I didn't lose my childhood. There was no, nothing lost about my childhood. I had, I had what I needed. And I mean, I was a weird kid and I had a ton of energy and I needed something to put my energy into. And this was it, and this was perfect, you know? So if there are 
people out there that feel like you don't really fit, like in the class or on the team or, you know, in your friend group, you're kind of the weird kid or what have you or whatever, you know, I, I want you to know that there is hope for you. <laughs> There's hope for you. And that's what makes you special. That's like your, that's your thing, you know, and you can channel that. You can choose to utilize that to really don't see that as something that's a problem. See that as like your best quality, you know, and just really appreciate that because that's an important thing, I think. Um, and so, and I know people will be really sad, you know, they're going to be shocked, but I mean, I feel good. I feel great. And yeah, I had some problems with my health, but I didn't let it stop me and I didn't let it um, slow me down to the extent where I had to um, stop, you know, I mean, you got to take care of yourself and be smart about your health and stuff. And and even when you're young, especially when you're young, if you can make better, healthier choices when you're younger, you know, like about what you eat and all that and everything and uh, be active. I think it's good for you to do that. Anybody. But I mean, let's be real, you know, kids aren't going to necessarily believe that or understand that. But I, uh, I want my family to know how much I love them. And I think they did. I know they did. I know they did. I know they did. And I want my mom to know that it wasn't her fault, that she couldn't have changed things, that there's nothing more she could have done to prevent this from happening because I feel like that's an important thing to say, you know, you're a mom, like you understand, you understand, right? Like, you know, yeah, I do know. And I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure Cameron, Cam, I'm sure Cam, that she would be feeling a heavy heart and feel like, because I would be feeling like that I would totally be like, what else could I have done? What more could I do? Maybe I shouldn't have done this. Maybe I should have been there. Maybe, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, you know, I mean, I love my mom a lot and there's nothing she could have done that was different, you know? And so, and I don't want people to be sad and I know they will, but I want them to think about all that, all that I was able to experience in life. And I want them to take that and to just know that and to feel good about that and I know that sounds kind of funny but I want them to feel good about that and I want them to, to know then that not to just stay in like that sadness you know not to be not to get swallowed by the the heaviness you know the grief but to do something positive with it you know to really do something good and share that fun light heart light lighter kind of energy that will come eventually, I think. But at first, I, I know I know people will be really sad, you know, about it. But and there's really nothing. I mean, that's like a normal human thing, you know. There's really not much we can do to help that at this at this point. Just maybe to talk to me, or maybe maybe to know, you know, my because a lot of my fans are really young, and so I think it's important for them to know that I'm okay, and that I love them, and I appreciate them loving the work, and what they can do in the future then is to make sure that they you know watch the shows they love and support the actors and actresses they love and show up for the premieres of the movies and go to the movies and go to the performances when you can and to get inspired by the people that you appreciate and respect you know like get inspired by something that I did and maybe try it for yourself or maybe use that to encourage you to follow a dream that you may have you know so that's what I'd like to say about that. All right, Cam, it has been a pleasure to talk to you. You are very chatty. <laughs> you took up a lot of energy and I'm used to that. I have like three boys, so <laughs> it's okay. All right, you guys, thank you so much, Cam. Thank you very much. So much blessings and peace to you and the afterlife and love and healing to your family and friends as well during this time. So for you, my viewers here, You've been watching me channeling, chatting with Cameron Boyce, a well-known Disney actor who at the age of 20 died just very recently. And so having the opportunity to reflect upon his life and to messages to his fans and his family here, I hope that helps encourage and inspire you. As always here at Above Life Channel, the goal is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope because this, 
right here and right now is your life. This is your life. It's yours. So live it. Live it. Listen to Cameron's advice. Just live your life. Live it. This is Bridget. Thank you for watching.